Okay, welcome. Thank you everyone for joining Independent Jewish Voices for today's very exciting graphic novel launch of Primo Levi. Uh, we have a very special guest joining us from Italy, the author of this graphic novel, Matteo Mastragostino, who is going to be giving a presentation about his book uh, in just a little bit. And uh, a very, very exciting uh, program of events for, for you all today. So again, thank you for being with us. Um, just to introduce myself and to introduce Independent Jewish Voices for people who are unfamiliar with us. Um, so Independent Jewish Voices Canada is a national Jewish organization. Uh, we, we have chapters in 18 different cities and university campuses across the country. We're a grassroots organization grounded in the Jewish tradition that opposes all forms of racism and advocates for justice and peace for all in Israel, Palestine. And just over 10 years ago, we became the first national Jewish organization to officially support the Boycott, Divestments and Sanctions or BDS movement against Israeli apartheid. It's a point that we're very proud of. We've been working on various BDS campaigns with our partners in Palestine and around the world ever since. So we would encourage everyone to check out our website at ijvcanada.org. We'll be dropping a link to that uh, in the chat in just a little bit. Uh, we, we welcome the uh, participants, our audience members, if, if you want to um, communicate with, with people in the chat, if you want to drop in and say where you're tuning in from, feel free to do that. And um, if you want to hear about future events like this, we're, we're always doing exciting webinars, book launches, online rallies and protests. I would really encourage people to sign up for our newsletter. And you can do that by going to ijvcanada.org slash newsletter to get more information about upcoming future events. And finally, uh, these events are always free to join. We, we never charge money for, for tickets or anything like that, but they're, they're never free to put on. And so having said that, uh, we always do appreciate your donations to not only help support the work of IJV, but also to be able to ensure that we can continue to bring you events like this. And so if you want to make a donation of any amount, you can go to ijvcanada.org slash donate. Um, just to give you all a, a little bit of an idea of how this event is going to uh, run down today. So in just a little bit, uh, you'll be hearing from uh, my friend and colleague who's joining us from uh, Between the Lines Books. Well, I shouldn't say colleague because I don't work at Between the Lines Books. Um, but I, I mean like colleague in, in you know, social movements. Um, David Gray Donald is going to be telling us a little bit more about the book and, and about the work of Between the Lines. And then we'll be hearing from Judy Haven, who's a member of IJV Halifax and our uh, National Steering Committee Chair. And, and Judy's gonna lay the groundwork a little bit more uh, for today's event. And then we'll be hearing from Matteo Mastragostino, uh, who is the author of the book. He's gonna be giving a presentation. You'll be able to see some of the slides, some of the, the images from the book, because this, of course it's a graphic novel, so it's a very visual medium. Uh, and then we'll be doing a question and answer period. So if you have a question for Matteo, uh, the best place to put that is in the, the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Don't put the questions in the chat because it's very easy to, uh, to lose track of them there. But again, if you have a question, we'll be doing a short Q&A at the end of the event. And just before moving on, I, I did want to say that today, April 19th, is the, it's a very important anniversary. It's, it's the anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising uh, in Poland during World War II. And, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a day that is marked both by bravery and, and by tragedy where, where Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto uh, made this very difficult decision to, to rise up and defend themselves uh, against, against the Nazis. And, you know, with that in mind, it, it's a day that's really important to think about the legacy of Primo Levi, who was an Italian anti-fascist and Holocaust survivor. He wasn't in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, but very much embodied the spirit of, of Jewish resistance to the Nazi atrocities happening in Europe in World War II. 
So with that being said, um, I want to turn it over to David Gray Donald, who's going to be telling us a little bit about Between the Lines books. Take it away, David. Thanks so much, Aaron. Um, so I'm uh, Dave, David, um, with Between the Lines. Uh, we're a book publisher based in Toronto, um, Dish with One Spoon Treaty uh, Territory. And we've been publishing books independently since 1977. And we're so uh, thrilled to be publishing Primo Levy and hosting this event with Independent Jewish Voices uh, Canada. And Ju um, Primo Levy is the English translation of the Italian uh, graphic novel. And uh, I'll show you a tiny bit, but um, Matteo will really show you what's in the book. And we, we really encourage you to pick up a copy. Um, the book has also um, been translated into French, and we're so, so happy to be the English language publisher. Um, we are offering a uh, $5 discount for the next 24 hours on the book, and I'll put the, the link and the uh, offer code in the chat and on uh, Facebook. So make sure to pick up the book. It's great for people who are less familiar with Primo Levi, less familiar um, with what happened at Auschwitz, uh, less, less familiar with the Holocaust, and people who are more familiar. Um, it's just a beautiful, uh, very affecting, very powerful book. Um, and just to let you know, uh, between the lines, we publish um, a, a wide range of sort of lefty nonfiction. Um, we just published this book, um, Bent Out of Shape, about Women, women's bodies in the workplace and how they're disproportionately strained and injured. Um, a couple of years ago, we published uh, this book, The Montreal Stettel, um, uh, about the Jewish uh, immigration to Montreal after World War II, after the Holocaust. Um, lots of books. I'll put the link on our in the chat. Um, check us out. And I'm so happy uh, that we're, we're part of this event and, and publishing this book. And with that, I'll pass it back to Aaron. Thank you, David. And uh, you know, I, I just wanted to say that now especially is an amazing time to support our independent publishers, support your favorite independent bookstore. And so, yeah, I really just want to encourage people if you enjoy today's presentation to order a copy of the book, either directly from Between the Lines or you can, uh, depending on COVID restrictions in, in your city, it might be a bit hard for our friends, I know, in, in Toronto and in parts of Ontario, but to order it directly through your favorite uh, independent uh, bookstore. Uh, and so with that being said, I want to turn it over to Judy Haven, who's joining us today from Halifax and is a member of IJV Halifax and is going to um, lay the groundwork a little bit more for us. So over to you, Judy. Mm, thanks very much, Aaron. I just want to say good afternoon. Uh, as you know, my name is Judy Haven. I'm a founding member and the outgoing chair of Independent Jewish Voices, and I do live in Halifax. Today, it's my great pleasure to host this webinar and book review of Primo Levi's of Primo Levi by Matteo Mastrogostino and illustrated by Alessandro Ranga, Rangiashi. This book is a graphic novel published by Between the Lines. Primo Levi is Matteo Mastragostino's first graphic novel. Two others have followed. Jan Math is a graphic biography about a famous Cambodian painter who was imprisoned by the Khmer Rouge. And Perlaska is a graphic biography of Giorgio Perlaska, Perlaska who helped save 5,000 Jews from extermination in World War II. Now, before we turn to the book itself, a bit of history about the Jews in Italy. Thousands of Jews fled to Italy and Greece to escape the Spanish Inquisition and hundreds settled in Italy around 1500. They were more or less free to practice their faith and were involved in many professions. That is until the mid 1600s when they were confined to ghettos for nearly 200 years. Perhaps the most famous ghetto was in Venice immortalized by Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. In 1848, the Jews were emancipated and lived freely for about 100 years. Primo Levi was born into a comfortable middle-class family in 1918 in Turin, Italy. It was a few years before Mussolini and fascism took hold in Italy. Levi was a very good student and had a close relationship with his family. 
In the 1930s, there were more than 5,000 Jews in Italy, most of whom were quite assimilated. Politically, the Jews were divided amongst the Zionists, the communists, and even the fascists. Yes, Mussolini's own partner, Margarita Sarfati, was Jewish. However, in 1938, Mussolini imposed the racial laws. Levy had graduated already from chemistry at the university, but due to racial laws, he could not get a professional job. Instead, he worked under the table and finally found work in a factory. Mussolini was deposed in 1943, but the Germans then took over Northern Italy and sent the Jews to death camps. Levy, who was an anti-fascist partisan, was rounded up and first sent to Fossili internment camp in Italy, and then to Auschwitz concentration camp in 1944. He was young and moderately healthy and a German speaker and somehow he survived Auschwitz for 11 months. Just before liberation, the Germans forced an evacuation of the camp and the prisoners had to go on a death march. But Levy who had scarlet fever was very ill and just left behind to die. He was liberated by the Red Army in 1945. It took almost, 10, almost a year for him to recover to make his way back to Turin. And there he started working in his field of chemistry at Duco, a DuPont owned paint factory. Because of the commuting distance from his home to the factory, he often stayed in Duco's dormitories and there he could write undisturbed. And that's where he did write. In all, he wrote nearly 20 books and essays, some of which have only recently been translated into English. I have an excerpt here from Ian Thompson's biography of Primo Levi. In 1983, Levi traveled to Milan to meet the survivor statesman Elie Wiesel, whom I'm sure all of you have heard of. Levi was not very fond of Wiesel, or rather of what he stood for. Wiesel had cornered a sentimental middle-brow Jewish market and made a celebrity cult of his survivor status. Perhaps Levy was a bit envious. He had never achieved, nor would he ever achieve, the reverence bordering, bordering on idolatry that was lavished on Wiesel in America. Wiesel published, admonished Levy, uh, Levy for his anti-Israel stance and criticism of Prime Minister Begin's Defense Minister Ariel Sharon for his part in the Lebanon invasion. Indeed, Levy was critical of both Begin and Sharon in the early 80s and called for the resignation after the massacres of Sabra and Shatila. In interviews, he insisted on the distinction that had to be made between Jewish values and the state of Israel and he rested his hope in the left, left-wing demonstrations against Israel and remarked that blood spilled in that region pained him, not the Jewish blood, but the blood of everyone. Primo Levi died in 1987, April 11th. He fell from a third floor balcony in his Turin home, which he shared with his wife and his mother. He had two grown children. Though his death was ruled a suicide, no note was ever found and many who knew him thought it was an accidental death. He was not yet 70. So today I have the pleasure of introducing Matteo Mastro Gosestino, author of Primo Levi, and he's gonna tell you something of himself and about his book. Matteo. Thank you, Judy. Uh... Hi to everyone, I'm uh, Matteo Mastragostino. I'm an uh, Italian comic book writer. And uh, first of all, I want to apologize for my poor English, but I try to do my best to speak up and uh, to show my, the comic book that I did with uh, Alessandro Rangiasci uh, four years ago. Uh, First of all, I, I am a comic book writer. I have got a degree in industrial design at the Polytechnic of Milan. And uh, Judy told you that uh, this is my first, but uh, not only one book, because uh, I've got uh, two other 
uh, I published it. Uh, I published it uh, two other books: uh, Giorgio Perlasca, The History of an Italian uh, Great Man That Saved Five Thousand uh, Jews in Budapest in uh, 1944, and uh, Van Ness, The History of a a, a Cambodian painter that uh, uh, that was uh, a great artist and uh, he fought ag against the Khmer Rouge. Uh, I'll show you um, some page of uh, my book so I can explain better um, the work. Uh, just a moment, please. That's okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Uh, this is uh, the first page, so you can see. Uh, this is the start of the book. Uh, how many times uh, you wrote them, and uh, in how many times, you know, how many nightmares I saw them? One, seven, four. Five, one, and to finish seven. But I couldn't image that. I would have carried six of them on my arm for my whole life. Uh, Primo Levi was, uh, first of all, it was a great student. He got a degree in chemistry. And uh, for the second one, maybe um, we we know four different primo levi: the student, great student, the chemist, because uh, he worked all life in uh, a chemist factory near Turin. Yeah, we know the great writer. I think that Primo Levi was one of the best writers in, uh, in Italy. Uh, surely the, on the last century. And uh, last of all, we all we know that is that uh, Primo Levi was a Jew, was a survivor of uh, the concentration camp of Auschwitz. And uh, yeah, it's crazy that uh, Primo Levi was uh, one of the best uh, writers, but he never was a professional writer because uh, he worked all uh, his life in uh, the factory. And uh, he wrote uh, uh, his book uh, on every night. Uh, and uh, this is uh, amazing because uh, when uh, we, use, we think that uh, our life, uh, when we got the spare times, we we make uh, we go out, uh, we make uh, we make sports, uh, we 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 have fun, but uh, he used uh, all his uh, spare time to uh, write his uh, worst nightmare. His, uh, his worst period of his life. And I think uh, it's uh, really courageous, it is, it's really brave for a man to do this work. Uh, the first time he wrote, uh, if, is, uh, if this is a man, it was in 1946. Uh, at the time in Italy, no one wants to know what uh, he uh, has to tell because uh, no one wants to remember fascism, want to remember what uh, happened in uh, the last few years. Uh, he uh, tried to publish his book, but uh, he only found a little, uh, a little house of uh, publishing and uh, 
he, they made only 2,500 uh, copies and uh, they didn't uh, sell all the books. And uh, it was crazy because uh, with an Audi, if uh, this is a man, uh, sold uh, two millions and uh, a half books in uh, only in Italy. And uh, this book was translated in uh, all the world. Uh, one of the important thing of uh, Primo Levi. Uh, this book uh, mm, is not uh, a real biography. This book is uh, my personal vision of Primo Levi. And uh, I wrote uh, this book uh, thinking uh, uh, on a memory, on a past memory of myself. I remember clearly when I was 10 that uh, on TV, on an Italian TV, there was uh, the television, the television, um, the journalist told that uh, Primo Levi was dead. And uh, I was uh, really impressed by this, uh, this news. So I, when Becco Giallo Editore asked me to write a story, I think uh, how can I wrote a story without uh, uh, new Primo Levi personally. So I think that uh, this, uh, I think to um, do a fiction uh, because uh, I asked to myself, uh, what uh, did, what can you um, can you tell to other people on this book? What Primo Levi can tell uh, to uh, people? Uh, and uh, so I I create my personal Primo Levi, uh, based on uh, all the books of, uh, that uh, Primo Levi wrote, or uh, on based on, uh, on uh, all the books that uh, people wrote on Primo Levi. And uh, the books, the book, uh, on the book, uh, you can uh, see the meeting uh, of uh, Primo Levi with uh, Primo Levi and uh, a elementary school, uh, uh, the elementary uh, the elementary school of Rignon. Primo Levi is going to a class and uh, is going to um, tell to little kids uh, the his personal history of uh, um, survivor of the um, Auschwitz camp. And this is one of the things that uh, he tells to the to the students. Uh, the kids uh, ask him very simply questions, but uh, the answer of uh, Primo Levi are not so easy, so simple. So the question is: uh, Was it uh, this resistance? Uh, they ask him how he can survive, and uh, the answer, I was simply lucky. And uh, now I show you why he think that uh, he was lucky. First of all, uh, the first, uh, mm, uh, first of all, uh, Primo Levi, uh, I told you that Primo Levi got a chemistry degree. In autumn the, uh, of, uh, mm, 1944, he got a work in uh, the Commando 98, uh, 98 uh, a, chemi a chemistry level. So when the when the weather goes bad, he was working on a, a chemistry uh, library, and uh, he can uh, he can uh, he was safe and uh, is not working outside. The second, uh, the second one, uh, it was uh, that uh, uh, he find 
a really guardian angel and uh, this guardian angel uh, was uh, Lorenzo Perrone that was an Italian mason Perrone uh, worked on uh, Buma the factory the factory chemist the factory in uh, near the camp of Monowitz and uh, he helped Primo Levi a lot of times and uh, Primo Levi uh, remember that uh, uh, at the time he lost the the truth the the love for the people because uh, uh, in Auschwitz there are no friends there are uh, all the people are, are one against all and uh, Perrone show you uh, show uh, him that uh, in uh, the world there was uh, uh, nice people that uh, 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 risked uh, uh, his own life to help other people. And uh, the third thing is uh, that Primo Levi uh, studied German when he was a student and uh, it was uh, very important because in Italy the the Jews don't speak in Yiddish so when uh, Italian people uh, went to the um, concentration camp it was uh, really difficult uh, for them to speak with other people and uh, Primo Levi can spoke with other people because he knew uh, he knew German and uh, so uh, uh, it was very, very uh, important for uh, be a survivor and uh, to not uh, die in the concentration camp. And uh, he was lucky because uh, he was healthy all the time, and uh, but uh, he was uh, sick in January 1945. Uh, just a few days because, uh, before the Russian troops uh, free uh, the camp, and uh, he didn't uh, he didn't go to the terrible uh, death march, and uh, so he can uh, be safe. Uh, this is uh, the camp of Monowitz. Uh, Primo Levi uh, was there in, near the Buna. This is the this was the chemistry factory. This was the camp that uh, now mm, doesn't exist anymore. And uh, I show you another terrible uh, thing. Uh, this was uh, uh, the selection. I don't know if you know this uh, work. I show you this uh, by the beautiful um, draws uh, of uh, Alexander, Alessandro Rangiashi. Uh, when the selection starts, you have to put off your, uh, your dress and uh, this is, uh, I think that uh, this uh, page is uh, beautiful and terrible at the same time because Alessandro uh, did a great job to represent it, uh, uh, how the people uh, were in uh, Auschwitz. When the selection starts, the all uh, the people, all the naked people, uh, were uh, put uh, together like animals and uh, ready for the slaughter. What was the slaughter? You have got a card in your hand and you have to run uh, right to the doctor. Uh, you have to do uh, your best. When you 
mm, go to the doctor, you have to give him the, this card and uh, he put this card on his left on, or on, on his life or his uh, right. But uh, you didn't know what was the right one because uh, one of this one, one of these two will be uh, for the people that uh, are going to die and uh, another one for the people that are going to be safe. But you don't know uh, why. You don't know uh, how it uh, works and uh, so the prisoners can understand this only asked uh, uh, to other people, uh, they look at, at the uh, the sick one, and they uh, they ask it uh, where uh, this card uh, he the card of this uh, sick man was. If the if uh, his card was at the left, maybe the left one are going to the to die in a gas uh, in a gas chamber, and uh, it was terrible. And uh, another thing uh, that uh, I did not I did not understand, and I do not understand today, is uh, that uh, the people that are going to die are going to have a double lunch, and uh, it's crazy because uh, their last one. Uh, will be the better of all the time in the camp of uh, Auschwitz. And uh, to me, it's uh, crazy because uh, you have to um, to take care of the people that uh, are going to work, are going to stay, not of the people that are that you are going to die. And uh, it's really really strange to me and uh, for all the people that uh, survived and, uh, and this is a uh, another question that is uh, really strange because Primo Levi told uh, uh, many times this uh, thing at the end of the comic book the teacher asked Primo Levi a simple question do you think uh, a horror like this, like that could return in the future? That's the question I often get. Perhaps people think that the survivor can predict the future. You see, miss, we are not fortune tellers. We are simply victims. Uh, it's uh, crazy because uh, how Primo Levi can imagine the future. It's crazy uh, to think that uh, uh, the future is uh, a survivor can uh, imagine how uh, how is going to to work to going to go the world the world the whole world. He was uh, just a victim. He was a he was a fortune teller and. Uh, Primo Levi uh, told the many times this uh, thing. And uh, for the last uh, slide, I'll show you a, a quote of uh, Primo Levi that uh, I think it's uh, really important um, to remember. If understanding is impossible, knowing is necessary because uh, what happened can return. Conscience can be seduced and darkened again, even our own. Okay. Just a moment, please. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, 
thank you. I think that I I'm sorry, I'm uh, really tragic with English, but uh, I try to do my best. Uh, I hope that uh, you can understand, but I'm not so sure. Oh, we got a couple of comments from people saying thank you, and your English is great. I think most of us understood <laughs> everything you said, and it was a very okay. moving presentation. I just want to ask you a couple of questions to lead off before we open it for other questions. I know from what you said uh, that you see Levy as a kind of a hero. What does being Jewish say to you as a non-Jew? Uh, I do not understand properly the question. Well, Can you repeat, please? Sure. I know you're not Jewish, but no. you are interested in Levy. What does he mean to you? Uh, uh, okay. Primo Levi, first of all, is a, a really brave man, and uh, this is uh, this uh, this shocked me because uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, he was uh, not only a great uh, writer but uh, a great man. And uh, I think uh, that uh, all the people have uh, to uh, remember the Levy's figure because uh, it's really important because uh, uh, if, you, uh, if we lost the memory, uh, it will be easier for the fascist to, um, to grow and come back. And uh, Primo Levi is a, a is a fighter. But I remember this uh, description of Primo Levi. Primo Levi is a fighter who fought uh, that fought with the world. And uh, this is important because uh, it's uh, really difficult to. Uh, fight the world only with words, but I think it's the right way to have peace in all the world. And just a final question I was going to ask you, how do you work with your illustrator, Alessandro Rangiashi? How do you do this job of working with uh, an illustrator? Okay, yeah, it, uh, it's uh, a really fun story because uh, uh, I am from Lecco, uh, the, the, that is uh, 30 kilometers uh, at the north of Milan, and uh, he is from uh, Rome. And uh, it's crazy because uh, uh, we started the work together in December uh, 2016. And uh, we met for the first time in April, April 2017, when uh, we went to the first presentation of the book. We went together at uh, Naples, and uh, uh, I told him that uh, we could meet uh, five minutes after the, the meeting, because uh, uh, so we can, uh, may, we can uh, speak together a little bit and uh, know together. Uh, but uh, the work was uh, was uh, doing. I, we do we did the work uh, by distance. I was in Lecco, and he was uh, in uh, his own home. But I think that uh, it worked. And uh, it's uh, not easy because uh, Lecco is not, is not a, a big city. And uh, all uh, the book uh, I did, I worked on uh, with the uh, illustrator of uh, Old Italy, Armando, who did uh, uh, Perlasca, is uh, from Trieste, and Paolo, the illustrator of uh, Van Nat is from Milan. 
but uh, we never met. We just work. Uh, I send to the to the comic book artist the text. I I write the 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 script, and uh, we work together, and we have a, a little run together. I wrote, and uh, they they drew. Well, thank you for the answers, and it's really a pleasure. It was a pleasure to read the book. So now I'm going to ask Aaron, who's going to moderate our question and answer period. Thank you, Judy, and thank you, Matteo, for that wonderful presentation on the book. Um, so again, we're, we're going to be uh, we're going to be taking some questions from the audience now. If you have a question, please do type it into the Q and A box, and uh, we'll try to get to as many as possible. Uh, I see a couple of questions in there in, in Italian, which is wonderful, but uh, I would just say that, um, you know, I, I don't speak Italian, unfortunately, and uh, it, it'll just be easier um, to, to put the questions in, in English just for the benefit of, of everyone here uh, on this event. Uh, but maybe Matteo can write back afterwards to, to some of the questions as well in Italian. Um, okay. So we have one question here. This is uh, Matteo, it's about uh, the research process for this book. And someone is wondering if you can just talk a little bit more about your research process and, and how you researched uh, this book before writing it. Uh, uh, Primo Levi uh, wrote a lot of books. And uh, when I started this work, I think that uh, uh, it was clear to me that uh, I can't do, uh, I couldn't do uh, a comic book version of uh, if, this, if uh, this is a man. Because uh, I think that uh, if uh, this is a man is a perfect book and uh, it's impossible to do a better job and uh, that's not fair to um, do uh, this job, this uh, thing. So I think that uh, I could imagine my own Primo Levi based on the book that he wrote. Um, I know uh, the, the principal one uh, ob obviously was uh, if this is a man, uh, I use it uh, a little bit of uh, the truth that is uh, the second one but uh, there are a lot of books at uh, the end of the of the comic book there are uh, all the references uh, is in, uh, in english so uh, you can uh, you can show this I, don't know. Okay. I remember all the title but uh, they are in italian and uh, primo levi uh, did a lot of interview and uh, I um, find all this information and uh, I create my own Primo Levi and uh, this is the fit. Mm, thank you. Our, our next question is from Emily <clears throat> and Emily asks um, what has been the response to the book in Italy or or how has the book been received in, in Italy by the Italian public? Uh, I think that uh, it has uh, a, um, uh, um, uh, so, uh, uh, okay. First of all, uh, me and Alessandro was, uh, uh, for me and Alessandro was the first book. So, uh, it's a little bit difficult to uh, have uh, uh, for uh, own uh, people that uh, follow us. We are no, we uh, add no followers. But uh, I think that the book was uh, well, uh, well received. It's okay. It's, a, it's correct. Mm -hmm. Well received because in uh, and in. Uh, 2019, a big uh, newspaper uh, called La Repubblica used this book for uh, 
the anniversary of uh, the the born of Primo Levi. That uh, he was born in uh, 1919 uh, uh, and in uh, 2019, uh, for a century later, they used uh, our own book to 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 show to the people uh, this. Uh, it was uh, sold with uh, this important newspaper that uh, is uh, one of the three most important newspaper in Italy. Mm. And uh, after, I think that uh, he has got a big run because uh, uh, it was translated in French, it was translated in German. Uh, thank you to David. Uh, and uh, between the line, uh, uh, we've got the English, ver English version. And uh, this year we got the Croatian one and maybe the Spanish one. So for uh, uh, a book uh, published by two ex exordians is okay, it's correct, and uh, I think that uh, it's a great run. I know that uh, mm, some of the people uh, read the book because uh, it's uh, a book that talked about Primo Levi, but uh, I know that uh, all these people, after the the, they read the book, uh, are happy, and uh, mm -hmm. so that's okay. Thank you. Our, our next question is from Joan, um, and it's a bit of a similar question to this. It's you know looking at the the public reception and how people are receiving this book. Um, a, a lot of the times with graphic novels, it's an interesting medium because, of course. They can be written for adults, but it's a very good medium to convey these kinds of stories to children or teenagers. And so Joan asks, how, how are children or preteens or young teenagers responding to this book? Okay. Uh, I will tell you a story. This, uh, I'm uh, very passionate about basketball and uh, I train uh, child, uh, a lot of children by, uh, for a lot of years. When uh, the book, when the book uh, was out in uh, 2017, uh, a lot of uh, kids went to the first presentation of the book. And uh, the mother of uh, one of them told me that uh, uh, thank you that told me this, uh, this phrase. Uh, thank you, Matteo, because uh, next summer we are going to, to go to Auschwitz and uh, I didn't know how to present um, this to my son, Nicola. And uh, with your book, I think that uh, your book is perfect to show uh, this to my son. And uh, I was uh, very grateful for this because uh, uh, I did a lot of presentation in, uh, on school, or in Italian school, and uh, it was uh, great to me to spoke about Primo Levi. And uh, that's uh, another important thing is uh, this. Uh, I have got a lot of people that told me this. I wrote, I read your book, and after I wanted to uh, read another time the books of Primo Levi. And this is uh, very important because uh, uh, if you uh, read my book, and my book um, uh, show you a little thing of Primo Levi, and after you want to uh, know more about Primo Levi, uh, I did uh, my job correctly, I think. Thank you for that. 
you're speaking to a lot of Canadians and you just mentioned that you're passionate about basketball. I have to ask if you're a Toronto Raptors fan. Uh, I am a huge fan of Denver Nuggets. Ah, okay. Well, I know they have Canadian players for them. Anyways, we're not here to talk <laughs> about basketball. Um, we'll, uh, we'll go to another question now. And this is actually from another um, fellow artist and, and graphic novelist, uh, Frida Gutman. And I should mention Frida is uh, working on a graphic novel about the Bund. And uh, so it's, it's great that she's joining us for this event. And so her question is, um, could you talk about why you do graphic novels? And what does it mean for you to tell a story in images? Okay. Uh, why I do graphic novels? Uh, uh, it's, I think it's simple because uh, I love uh, graphic novels. When I was a kid, I started uh, to read uh, comic books, uh, maybe at four. Uh, I started uh, with comic, book, comic books after books. And uh, I really loved comic books for all my life. And I think that the graphic novel is uh, a great, uh, uh, a great uh, uh, way, a great way to talk to people, to uh, to tell stories. Uh, and the graphic novel is uh, easier to read. Uh, you can read this book in, uh, I think, uh, 40 minutes and uh, you have not to uh, pass a lot of hours on uh, this book. And uh, you can uh, read uh, the graphic novel easily. And uh, after the draw, uh, give, give power to the story. And uh, the Mm, I think that uh, the drawing of uh, Alessandro was uh, perfect for this story. He did a great job and uh, I'm really grateful to him. He's a great artist and uh, we are now, we are going uh, to do another book together and I'm so grateful. He's uh, very, very talented. Thank you. We have uh, time for maybe a couple more questions. So um, uh, okay. again, if people have questions, just feel free to write them. And like I said, we'll try to get to as many as possible. Uh, our next question is from Yakov. And uh, Yakov says, um, Primo Levi tried to keep an emotional detachment from the tragedy of the Holocaust. Um, did you also try to convey this objective attitude? So, so an emotional, detachment from the material? Uh, I do not understand what is an emotional detachment, I'm sorry. Mm, yeah, so, um, and, and I maybe I don't know Primo Levi's uh, story quite well enough to, to be able to exactly convey the question. Um, may, maybe to try to phrase it in another way, um, you know, Primo Levi, uh, you know, according to, to Yaakov, tried, tried in a way to keep an emotional distance perhaps from the tragedy he was seeing to, to try to remove his emotions. And I'm wondering if you would have anything to say about I that. I don't think so because uh, uh, no one told him to write a book uh, on uh, his tragedy. He, the first time uh, he went back in 1945 and in 1946, uh, he wrote, the his uh, first book, so I don't think that is. Uh, uh, I don't think so. I'm not. I do not agree with this mm. question. Is uh, in Italy, but I think in all the world is uh, one of the principal uh, uh, writer on the Holocaust, and uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, he suffered a lot of uh, a lot in his uh, life, and for this. Yeah. One, one question I had for you, Matteo, is um, you consider yourself a journalist as well, too. And, and you're, of course, writing graphic novels. And for many of us, if we think about comics journalism, as it's known in graphic novels, of course, we think about the great Joe Sacco, who's written 
many graphic novels about Palestine. He just published a graphic novel about the Dene people and indigenous people in Canada. Uh, and I'm curious if you've been influenced uh, either by Joe Sacco or by the work of other graphic novelists you could tell us about. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I think that I was uh, influenced by the Italian comic book artist that uh, I read when I was uh, young. I'm not a huge fan of Joe Sacco because I think that uh, his books are uh, too texted, is that correct? They, I think that uh, the comic book uh, that uh, is uh, have, have to be, a comic book has to be easier, has to be uh, not so easy like the works of Josako. I know that he's a, a great, uh, a great artist. I know that he's a wonderful artist, but uh, uh, I think that it's not my cup of tea. That that's fair. We can all have our different opinions about uh, different yeah, artists. Sure, sure, sure. But I, 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 uh, there was a great, uh, uh, a great comic book story, uh, the boxer for a German uh, artist. I don't remember uh, his name. This was a great story, Boxer. And uh, mm. so Mouse of uh, Spiegelman. Yes. Yeah. It was a masterpiece uh, that uh, I think uh, the masterpiece of uh, Holocaust in comic book. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We have time for uh, one more question. And this question is from Jesse. Uh, and Jesse asks, how much interaction is there between the writing and the illustrator? And how much does the illustrator bring into the story development? So if you could talk again about the collaboration between yourself and the illustrator, Alessandro, for this. OK. I'll, OK. Uh, to me, uh, it's uh, simple. It's uh, a job that you do together. So you have to be happy together. Uh, I write the text, but after Alessandro uh, did uh, his own vision of the book, after he, he sent me a preview and we worked together at this preview. Sometimes Alessandro told me, you wrote this, but I imagine this, that. And uh, always when he made a changement, uh, the work uh, was better. So uh, we are together. The, we want to uh, do the better book uh, that we could. So uh, it's a stupid uh, told him that, that you have to do what I wrote on the page. Read this, imagine this, and now we are working together to have the best uh, book as we can. Thank you again for that, Matteo. And uh, that's about all the time we have for today. So. I wanna thank everyone for joining us for this. Um, I wanna of course send a big thank you to, to Judy Haven in Halifax for having uh, introduced this event. And of course, thank you to Matteo for joining us from Italy to talk about uh, this wonderful, wonderful book of yours on Primo Levi. Um, and again, uh, yeah, thank you to Between the Lines for, uh, for having done this book. David, is there any uh, last word you wanna say before we go? Uh, the link is there to order the book. Um, please check it out and, and look out for our future books. Thanks so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. And just one last word before we go is I do want to encourage people um, to, uh, to tune in for IJV's next event, which is gonna be April the 29th. 
It is also a book launch. Uh, we, we're doing two book launches in one month, which is, which is funny. We're almost in the book business, but uh, you know, we wear many hats at, at IJV. And so that launch is gonna be for the book, There's Nothing So Whole as a Broken Heart, Mending the World as Jewish Anarchists. It's a fabulous anthology of uh, contemporary Jewish anarchist writing. So again, April the 29th, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, I put a link earlier in the chat where you can find it on our website. But again, just go to ijvcanada.org uh, and you can find a link there to, um, to register for that event. And thank you all again for joining and do keep tuning into not only Between the Lines, but also IJV on social media and our websites to keep finding out about events like this. I hope you all have a wonderful day.